I think, you know, the, the, the first comment to, to say that, you know, COVID was not expected. Uh, certainly not on the scale it happened, and and government had to react very, very quickly to it. And with the national lockdown, um, there was immediate hardship uh, amongst the informal sector. Um, and certainly in, in Cape Town, we were very, very aware of it. And, and when the minister published those regulations allowing informal food trading to take place, uh, again, you know, with hindsight, it would have been far better to be able to agree with the sector on, on the actual needs to address the social distancing, uh, the location of traders, um, but hindsight is always a perfect science. Um, just, just for information, uh, as of Friday evening, the city of Cape Town had issued just over three and a half thousand uh, COVID food trading permits uh, at something like 12, 12, 14 different locations across the municipality. Um, in, in preparing for this afternoon session, um, I, I decided to focus on, on two areas. The first one was the, the impact the lockdown measures had on the informal trade. And I think, you know, the first one initially was um, the food traders' immediate loss of income. Um, and I, I think, again, we, uh, we understand, but we don't really appreciate that the food traders and, and non-food traders literally live day to day. Uh, they live hand to mouth. So immediately there was a total loss of income uh, to food traders. And then also because the food traders were not allowed to operate, uh, immediately the, the communities and, and Mark, you very correctly pointed out the poorer communities uh, immediately were not able to access food. And, and then with the, the minister's regulations that came in, um, you know, the regulations allowed for food traders to trade within the municipality but the municipality needed to issue a permit. Um, and, you know, again, with hindsight, the regulations uh, were issued, but, you know, they could have that been worded in a, in a, a better way. Um, and then the, the fifth, fifth uh, question that was posed, what is the role of government and the police in implementing lockdown measures in the informal trade sector? And I, you know, in, in Cape Town, we, we were very clear that the role of, of the safety and security when it comes to food traders is awareness of education and assistance. Um, the, the, we really needed to bring everybody up to speed to make everybody aware um, and getting the information out there and where practical refer traders to, to city officials to assist with business support and with real, real needs. And all this had to happen in a space where we all had to keep oneself safe um, and social distancing and, and to respect the, the call of our president. Um, just commenting a bit on what Mark said, uh, absolutely, you know, the we, hindsight is wonderful. We, we need to look at the regulations, um, not only the minister's COVID regulations, but the, the regulations uh, that impact on the informal sector, because the way the regulations are worded, uh, they didn't envisage COVID. They didn't envisage the need to have social distancing. So in most municipalities, you have demarcated trading areas, um, and how, you know that's impractical when it comes to the the COVID situation. Paul, and, and then it, can sorry. can I ask you to turn up your mic volume a bit because you're a bit faint? Is that possible? No, that is an ongoing challenge. So maybe I'm going to speak closer to the mic. Is that better? Uh, it is slightly better. Oh, yes. Sorry about that. Um, and when I'm finished, if I've got to speak again, I'll use my cell phone. Um, sure. Just to, to say that I agree with Mark. One needs to look at the, the, the regulation. But I want to say not only the, the COVID regulations, but also post-COVID, the, the regulations that impact on informal trade. Um, most of the metros have demarcated trading areas um, and, and they do not speak to situations like COVID. Um, and, and we certainly need to look at that. 
And then also what Mark said about planning for the for informal trade, uh, the regulations, um, the need for infrastructure, Rashida talked about that as well, uh, absolutely supportive. Thanks, Flo. Great, thanks, thanks, Paul. Um, I'm quite curious also to get a sense from you, you know, you've mentioned all the registration processes taking place. To what extent do you feel that the city was ready and has had the capacity to deal with the, um, the influx of, of uh, traders suddenly needing to be registered? Was that an easy task or is that, was that a challenge and, and how are you dealing with that? Flo, certainly in, in the city of Cape Town, um, we needed to hit the ground running uh, very quickly. And, you know, we went from lockdown to, to the need to issue food, uh, uh, informal trade permits in a very, very short period of time, literally over the weekend. And, and in the process of preparing for that, the, the minister amended the regulations. So, and then we, we had, you know, local economic development officials who were not considered to be essential workers suddenly had to be declared essential workers and then sent back to their different offices to issue permits. So the city of Cape Town certainly hit the ground running and, and we did remarkably well. Um, as I mentioned, you know, we, we have issued um, as of Friday, three and a half thousand permits for, for food traders. Um, and then in the midst of all that, uh, some of our officers, uh, people tested positive for, for the virus. So those officers had to be shut down. But notwithstanding that, uh, certainly the city of Cape Town had done remarkably well. And, and we have very, very close liaison with the, the um, law enforcement agencies and also with the South African Police Services to try and help address any issues that raised. 